see the size of that bloody thing. I want to kill the cursed thing. He is on this ship, which means that we will never leave it. The devil is real. May God have mercy on us all. The movie begins on a stormy night, when some officers tell the constable that a boat is blown in with the storm. When they are going towards the ship, they meet a lightman named Fletcher, who tells the constable that he went aboard to see if anyone was alive. The constable notices a book in his hands and he tells him that it's the captain's law. He reads it and finds a warning in it saying if it finds them, God help them, as he has abandoned Demeter. They tried to stop him, and if they didn't succeed, God has mercy on their souls. We cut to four weeks earlier. The Demeter sits docked in Varna, Bulgaria, preparing to set sail for England. Captain Elliot needs to fill a few vacant positions on the crew, so he sends his first mate, Mr. Wadshek, to scour the local hangouts. Wadshek finds lots of volunteers, including a young man named Clements, an educated man. Clements says he's a graduate of Cambridge University and a doctor. He offers his services, but Wadshek isn't impressed, thinking he wouldn't be much use as a deckhand. Now the people who had come there to drop the crates refuse to stay there because they have to go back before the sun sets, and before leaving, their leader wishes them good luck. Now when the three men chosen by Wadshek are loading crates onto the ship, one of them gets spooked when he sees a crate that has the symbol of a dragon on it, causing him to lose his grip on it. The crate slips and nearly crushes Elliot's grandson Toby, but Clemens pulls him out of the way in time. The man says he knows this mark and it is a bad omen and then leaves there saying God save them all. Elliot shows his gratitude by welcoming Clemens on board. Everyone boards and Demeter is soon on her way, and as she leaves port, the Romani men who brought the crates to the dock watch and cross themselves, knowing what they're in for. Later, Toby gives Clemens a tour of the boat and introduces him to his dog Huck. He then shows him the livestock he is responsible for and then brings him to the galley, where he introduces him to their cook Joseph. That evening, Elliot tells Wadshek that he has decided this is to be his final voyage, as he has promised her daughter that he wouldn't let the sea air bleach the future out of Toby. He will arrange for him to be his successor as captain of the Demeter as soon as they reach London. Later, at dinner with the captain and the rest of the crew, Captain Elliot announces that each man will receive a bonus upon their timely arrival in England. He asks what the men will be spending their money on, and most of them naturally talk of new clothes and women. But Clemens says he'll be looking to continue his education, saying he needs to understand how the world works, and why it is the way it is. Suddenly Huck begins barking looking at the cargo hold, so Elliot asks Toby to see to the livestock. Clemens and Toby go to investigate and find that the animals are disturbed, and only then do they hear some loud noise. Clemens asks Toby to fetch the captain and tell him something foul in the cargo hold. After he leaves, Clemens goes in to check and finds that one of the crates has overturned, and there is a pile of dirt on the floor. He then notices a cloth in that pile, and before he can understand anything, suddenly something moves, and he is shocked to see that it is a girl. He brings her upstairs and tells them she was below deck and begins to check her. Wadshek asks him if he wants to help her. The captain asks him what he needs. Clemens tells him that her body is infected so he needs to attempt a blood transfusion. Now as he begins to transfuse his blood to her, we see a crate opening in the cargo hold and a creature comes out of it. Here Wadshek says that when she wakes up, they will toss her to the waves, to which Clemens says he didn't save this girl's life only to watch him end it, and let them off at the next port. Hearing this, Wadshek says if they stop, then they forfeit the bonus wage, and he is not forfeiting the bonus for him or this girl. Elliot asks Wadshek to lower his voice and says he would prefer not to have his final voyage marred by the death of a young woman. He tells them that they will repurpose the carpenter shed as the young woman's quarters, and Clemens will be solely dividing his own rations with her. Later, Clemens asks Toby to look after her for him, and if anyone tries to see her, he come to get him or the captain straight away. Meanwhile, Algaren spots that creature on the ship, but it disappears the next moment, and while looking for it, he finds some maggots and soil on the floor. Clemens also notices it and thinks it's Algaren, but he does not answer him, and as Clemens thinks of going to him, the creature disappears from there. Clemens leaves the ship's wheel and knocks on the ledge to call Algaren, and after a while, he hears a knock from the other side. Clemens starts to go in that direction, but suddenly Algaren comes from behind and asks him if he saw it. He says there is no one on the deck but them, but Algaren says there is something out there and then he leaves there. Meanwhile, Huck investigates noises coming from the cargo hold and barks at the shadow he sees moving around, but this turns out to be a bad move for the poor dog, as he becomes Dracula's first victim. Later, Joseph finds Huck's dead body. 
rushes to check the livestock and gets shocked to see that something violently killed them too. He informs the crew and the captain about it, and Elliot says anyone with knowledge of this heinous act needs to step forward now or find themselves in irons later. Petrovsky says it's happening because of that girl, as a woman on board is bad luck, but Clemens suspects that it may be rabies. Elliot says if this is an outbreak, then they will need to make port and asks Clemens could a human catch this infection. He says it cannot pass to a human without it being bit, and then Elliot orders Wadshek to dispose of the meat immediately. This makes Petrovsky furious, and he says it's not rabies that opened up the livestock cages, and then makes derogatory comments regarding Clemens and the woman, and when Clemens attempts to retaliate, Larson holds a knife at him. Only then Aldarin tells them that their powerful evil is on board. Meanwhile, we see the creature hiding in a corner, and he calls Anna's name. Later, Clemens goes to comfort Toby, who's naturally upset and feeling guilty, as caring for the livestock was his job. He explains to him that there are things in this world that they can't control, but they do their best. That evening, Aldarin tells Clemens that there is something unnatural on board with them, but he says he doesn't believe in superstitions. Aldarin says he saw his face last night, and he knows that he saw it too. Later, Toby tells Clemens the woman's been mumbling in her delirium, and he's figured out she's Romani and her name's Anna, and she's repeating a word over and over again, and that is feed. Later, Joseph tells Clemens that all the rats from the boat are gone. He then gets up and says that a boat without a rat is something against nature. Meanwhile, Petrovsky is on the watch when he hears noises. He gets up and thinks that Abrams is playing some kind of fool's joke. He goes to that side to check and gets shocked to see that the hatch is broken. Only then he hears someone's voice and walk towards the sound, where he sees Dracula crawling on the floor in a very weak condition. He takes out his knife and begins walking towards him, but suddenly he lunges and slashes his throat causing him to fall back, and we see Dracula licking his blood from the floor. Petrovsky tries to escape, but Dracula catches him and breaks his neck, before sucking his blood while he is still alive. After some time, Clemens finds Petrovsky's knife and blood all over the deck, due to which he gets scared and rings the signal bell. The next day, Wanshek initially accuses Clemens, but he asks him why would he kill and informs everyone about it. He then tells Captain that he examined the dog's body, and it wasn't killed in the larder like the other animals. It had bite marks on its neck like other animals, and their arteries were ripped open. Only then Anna comes there and says he is here, and that they have to get off this boat. Clemens restrains her and tries to calm her down, and Wadshek says that the captain will say a few words from the good book, and they will get on with things. Later, Anna tells Clemens about an evil from her village that lives in the mountains above in a castle. It appears as a man when it wants to hide its true nature, and at night, he feeds on the blood of the innocent. She had lived in the shadow of that castle her whole life, and she knew that the elders made bargains for the safety of their people. He asks her if she was given to this man, to which she says it's not a man or animal, and they call him Dracula. He asks her why he brought her aboard to which she shows him bite marks on her body saying he brought her here to feed. He is here on the ship now, which means that they will never leave it. Outside, Aldarin tells Larson that the woman looks harmless, but ever since she came on board, he wonders if it would have been better just to let the ocean have her, but then he thinks about his daughter. Larson then goes to light up the lamp, we see Dracula behind him, but when he turns around, he sees no one there. Now while he is going back, he stops hearing the knocks. Aldarin comes to him and asks him why is he knocking and only then they both hear the knocks. They both get alert and take out their knives, and only then Dracula jumps on Larson and kills him by smashing his face on the floor. Algern gets terrified seeing this and climbs high up to escape the creature, only for Dracula to follow him. Now because the ship's wheel was free, the ship gets imbalanced. Everyone comes up on deck and controls the boat, after which they start searching for Larson. During this, Clemens notices blood dripping on Toby, and when they look up, they find Algarin's unconscious with a wound on his forehead. They bring him down and ask him where is Larson. But as he wakes up, he begins screaming in fear. They bring him in and strap him to a bed, and then Clemens treats his wounds. He then tells them that the wound on his neck looks like the same bite they same in the animals and the girl in the carpenter's shed. Wadshek asks him if he thinks some devil did this, to which he says he does not, but something did, and that is real and on board. Hearing all this, Elliot says from now on, he wants two armed men for every watch and asks Wadshek to search the ship. Now as the night falls, Algarin turns into a vampire and frees himself from his bindings. After a while, Toby encounters him, but soon he realizes that he is not normal, and before he could flee, Algarin catches him and tries to take him away. However, Toby manages to free himself and locks himself in Captain's quarter. 
Algaran then starts ramming his head against the door to break it down, due to which Toby gets terrified and hides under a table. Upstairs they hear knocks and realize that Toby is in danger, and when Clemens reaches downstairs, he finds Algaran standing outside the captain's quarter. He tries to talk to him but finds that he is not Algaran anymore, and suddenly he attacks him, but Wadshek also reaches there and knocks him down. Elliot asks Toby to open the door, but Toby finds Dracula is already there inside the cabin. However, when he gets up, he disappears. Only then Elliot and others see Dracula inside and they try to break open the door, but Dracula catches Toby and bites on his neck. Anna comes by and grabs a rifle to blow the lock off the door, but by then, Toby has already been attacked by the creature, who has taken most of his blood. The next morning, while Clemens gives Toby blood transfusions using Captain Elliot's blood, the crew ties Algaran to the mast. Looking fully ghoulish, Algaran tells them all that he can see and hear everything including the blood rushing through their veins. He says it burns, to which Clemens thinks maybe he needs water. However, as the sun rises, the sun's light hits the deck and the crew watches in horror as Algaran catches fire, and Wadshek has to shoot him in the head to put him out of his misery. Later, Joseph says it is a punishment brought down for their sins, and then Wadshek comes there and asks Abrams to take the morning watch, and Joseph has to relieve him. But Joseph says that the child will be the next to rise up from death as Satan's blood is pumping through his veins. Wadshek asks him to shut up and see to the supplies. After they leave, Clemens says that whatever was at Algaran, it's fair to assume it is in the boy. Wadshek says that his blood transfusion saved the girl, to which he says Toby is smaller and weaker and his blood loss is greater. He thinks they might have to start discussing, to which Wadshek while giving the gun to him says go on, and look him in the eye when he does it. Clemens says that's not what he meant, but if they can find it, they might be able to figure out a way to save him. Later, while Abrams is on watch, he gets ambushed by the terrified Joseph, who knocks him out so he can steal one of the lifeboats. He rows away, trying to put as much distance between himself and the ship as possible. Meanwhile, Clemens and Anna open up all the crates, finding them all filled with dirt. But the crate Dracula sleeps in has a special mechanism that enables the lid to slide open and close. They also find in it an ornate cane with a dragon head. They realize that that's how he's been managing to elude them, by sleeping in the crate during the day. Here Joseph gets terrified hearing Dracula's voice, and after a while, Dracula comes flying and sits on his boat. Abrams rings the signal bells and tells everyone that the lifeboat is gone, and they find that there is nothing there but blood. As for poor Toby, the transfusions don't work, and he's beginning to look as bad as Algaran. Next day, they wrap him up in a sheet and take him up on deck, ready to bury him at sea. Anna says a prayer for him, and as they were about to pick him up, Elliot stops them saying that he saw him move. Clemens says he has no breath in his body and no heartbeat, but he says he is alive and removes the sheet, and Toby does open his eyes. Fully turned, he lunges for his grandfather, but being exposed to the sunlight, he catches fire. He nearly burns Captain Elliot to death as well before they throw his body into the water. Nearing England, what's left of the crew worries about what might happen if they bring the creature with them, so they decide to take a stand that night. Anna says they have to sink the ship with him on it, to which Clemens says they will set up an ambush and leave it on the sinking ship, and then they can escape on one of the lifeboats. However, Wadshek says this is his home and he won't tear her apart for this thing, but then he decides that he will do it himself. They then barricade the hold, so that he only has one way out on deck. Clemens then goes to Captain, who tells him that people need to know so there needs to be a record. Clemens tells him that they are abandoning ship and Wadshek below deck making preparation as they speak. Elliot takes out his gun and tells him that he comes to him and whispers to him behind his own eyes, that he can bring Toby back, and for that, he just need to bring to shore. He was about to shoot him, but Anna talks him down from it. Later that night, Anna takes the helm while Wadshek and Abrams watch from the crow's nest, guns at the ready. But a thick fog rolls in and then the fatal storm begins. Dracula of course appears, and Anna tells Clemens that he knows that they are waiting for him. Only then they realize that he can fly, looking like a human bat. Dracula takes out Abrams first, and when Wadshek realizes that he is not safe there, he tries to come down. But he gets attacked, causing him to fall through the deck, breaking his leg. Clemens on the other hand asks Anna to get the lifeboat free, while he goes to find Wadshek and Captain. Here Wadshek breaks the ship with an axe, but Dracula comes there and kill him. Meanwhile, Elliot ties himself to the wheel, and when Dracula comes there, he tries to renounce him, but he attacks and sucks his blood. Clemens finds him half dead and frees him, and he tells Clemens to let everyone know that he stayed true to his trust, and then he dies. Clemens then gets furious and challenges Dracula, causing him to appear and stand in front of him. 
He then spears his wings and jumps towards him and throws him away. But before he could kill him, Anna shoots him. Now when he lunges on Anna to kill her, Clemens attacks him with an axe. They try to escape, but Dracula grabs him by the throat. Clemens says he do not fear him, to which Dracul says he will. But before he could suck his blood, Anna cuts the mask down so it can pin him down. Then Clemens and Anna jump ship as Demeter gets tossed around and finally crashes onshore in England where the lighthouse crew finds it, and Dracula flees. As the sun comes up, Clemens and Anna cling to some of the floating wreckage and Clemens sees that Anna is slowly reverting to her vampirism. He says he can save her but she refuses, saying she's satisfied that she helped destroy the evil creature. Clemens watches helplessly as she floats away toward the sun and inlays. As the tragic story of the Demeter spreads through the town, Clemens goes to the local pub. He asks about getting to Carfax Abbey, where the crates were to be delivered. Then he hears the familiar sound of knocking, which the ship's crew used to use to signal each other. Clemens turns and sees the same cane with the dragon's head, banging on the floor. Then he sees Dracula, all cloaked up and peering out from under a dark hat. He follows him outside, but Dracula disappears. Clemens vows to pursue him and send him back to hell. Thanks for joining us on our horror movie recap adventure. If you enjoyed the chills, subscribing would mean a lot. Drop a comment to share your thoughts and keep the terror alive. Stay spooky and see you soon.